you'll find content on React, Vue, Solid or some other hot UI library all over YouTube these days. However, sometimes the heavy lifting in a real project is done by smaller tools aimed to solve specific problems. As a change of pace, today I want to give some love to a few unsung heroes in the web development space. So, in the next few minutes, we'll take a look at five small libraries you should know. We'll target styling, full text search, state management, animations, and more. Believe me, knowing these libraries will be useful, and the chances are you'll end up using some of them in your future project. Of course, we'll look at tools that are actively developed and have a promising roadmap ahead. Furthermore, I usually want to see some initial traction and community adoption before deciding to add a long-term dependency in any of my projects. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. For the last minute or so, you've seen me setting up a vid project and configuring a Uno CSS dev environment. So, the first tool on our list is focused on improving the way front-end developers are writing CSS. Uno CSS is an instant, on-demand, atomic CSS engine. What's atomic CSS, you ask? In short, it is a CSS architecture that favors small, single-purpose classes with names based on visual function. This is a fancy way of saying that instead of having a button class with a bunch of CSS rules, you can split the rules in different classes and use a more declarative way to style your elements. This might look messy at first, but there are some big advantages to this approach, especially if you are using a tool such as Uno to generate the CSS for you. First of all, you gain speed in the development process, since all the styling you need to do will happen directly in your template. Second of all, Atomic CSS really improves the reusability of your styling. Finally, CSS engines will generate only the rules you need, and the CSS bundle size sent to the client will decrease quite a lot. Let's spend a second reviewing the HTML I'm working on. Don't worry, I know that the class names are self-explanatory, and we won't spend too much time on the matter. I just want to outline that, besides the usual default atomic classes handling things such as padding or margins, Uno allows you to easily create classes and specify custom values for things such as dimensions or colors. The main complaint about the utility classes approach is that the HTML becomes difficult to maintain. Here are a couple of things you could do to alleviate this. On one hand, whenever you are identifying repetitive classes, like I just did on my input fields, you can easily create shortcuts in the configuration file. On the other hand, you can use ID extensions, such as inline fold, which will hide class names and give you a better dev experience. Before moving to the next library, I just want to mention Uno's Playground and Interactive Docs, two nice little resources which will help you get up to speed with utility classes in no time. In my experience, the first days of transitioning to Atomic CSS are pretty frustrating, especially if you are familiar with writing plain CSS or SAS. However, trust me, in the long run, this approach will allow you to write better, more maintainable apps. Next on the list is Lyra, an immutable, runtime agnostic, in-memory full-text search engine that works both on the client and on the server. Granted, full-text search is a pretty specific topic, but when you think about it, most of the apps you'll build will expose some sort of search capabilities. I'm a big fan of web technologies in general, and I'm excited every time somebody is bringing into this space tech which was considered purely backend specific a few years ago. Once I added Lira into the project, I created a new database in a service file. Since we'll be saving and searching through books, I defined the schema following a basic book structure. Inserting and removing objects from our database is straightforward since the API Lira is exposing is very intuitive. Now, search-wise, we have a lot of tools at our disposal. For instance, we can do a general search through all fields by passing a star to the properties field or do more targeted searches on specific fields. Now, to see this in action, I'll create a basic React component, and when the component is mounted in the DOM, I'll populate my database with some entries. I'm always trying to impress the ladies, so I'll use some good old-fashioned fiction titles here. In the JSX, I am using an anti-design autocomplete component, which calls the onSearch method when the user types something in the search box. As a quick side note, we are discussing useful libraries, and while ant design is not part of the current list, you can consider this an honorary mention. Ant design offers a clean and powerful set of React components, so be sure to check it out. Okay, back to the code. In the onSearch method, I am simply searching through the books using Lyra, and the results are rendered in the DOM. If you play with the results for a bit, you will see that this is not a simple text search, and there are some smart algorithms behind the library. 
We can also render the score of the search heat to better understand why and when some results are displayed. Full text search can have some pretty unpredictable results and you can use boosted fields if you want a bit more control. For instance, a book title match should matter more than a description match. Ok, let's switch gears and look at something a bit more pragmatic for a second. Tremor is a React library focused on helping you build dashboards as fast as possible. While we all hope to work on cool products and interesting features, the sad reality is that, more often than not, dev work happens on boring back office tools, cluttered dashboards and admin panels. Tremor is built on top of React, Tailwind CSS and WeCharts and offers you a wide range of modular components tailored for building amazing looking dashboards. If you're interested in what they have to offer, go ahead and check their documentation and their component library. For this demo, I simply installed the npm dependency, imported their CSS file and I was ready to go. Here is the type of product you can build in less than 100 lines of code. Pretty convenient, right? The days of reinventing the wheel are long gone, so I for one will always embrace tools that can really simplify my day-to-day -day job. Ok, now let me ask you this. What's the most difficult thing you have to do when developing a front-end app? If your answer is deciding what framework to use, you are right. Well, this next tool helps you with the second most difficult thing in front-end development. Managing state. Nanostores is a tiny state manager compatible with a long list of popular UI libraries. Let me preface this by saying that libraries such as Velt and Solid have their own internal store solutions. However, it is interesting to see an implementation addressing so many different frameworks at once. The main selling point of Nanostores is the simplicity. If you were involved in front-end development in the past 10 years, you are probably more than familiar with the whole state management saga. During this time, we went from two-way data bindings, to one-way data bindings, to the flux pattern, to lightweight solutions such as Recoil or Pinia. If I learned anything in all these years being a developer, is that simple is always better and it's hard to find anything as simple or as lightweight as nanostores. We can use atom stores to hold primitive values like strings, numbers or arrays and map stores to handle objects. Stores can be computed and more interestingly, they can be lazily initialized. What this means is that nanostores have two modes. Mounted, when they are actively used in the app and listeners are linked to the reference and disabled when they have no attached listeners. Despite the fact that this library can weigh a maximum of 1 kilobyte minified and gzipped, it offers support for actions, tasks, and even store events. On top of that, various flavors called smart stores are available. These can help you handle translations, routing, and even WebSocket communication through stores. Seriously now, nano stores are so impressive that they might actually deserve a fully dedicated video. Before moving to the last library on the list, I have to make you an offer you can't refuse. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel and in return, I'll stick to the point and wrap this video up in less than a minute. Deal? Ok then, let's take a quick look at AnimeJS. Smooth user experience and catchy animations are fairly common in mobile and web development these days. AnimeJS is by far the most popular library mentioned in this video. It offers a simple yet powerful API which will allow you to build some pretty cool stuff. On their website, you'll see a long list of mind-blowing examples, so you'll quickly understand the power behind combining this library with smart ideas and some vector graphics. While some of these examples might look like overkill for day-to-day -day usage, you can also use the anime function to create more basic stuff, like small UI cues in your interface or transitions between pages and components. Please let me know in the comments if there are any other such libraries you are using in your day-to-day -day job and until next time, thank you for watching.